In the previous lecture we started discussing the anti-hyperlipidemic drugs. We already discussed HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, so today we'll talk about niacin, which is also known as vitamin B3. First let's talk about the mechanism of action. Niacin strongly inhibits lipolysis in adipose tissue, which is the primary producer of circulating free fatty acids. The liver normally uses these circulating free fatty acids as a major precursor for triglyceride synthesis. So niacin causes a decrease in liver triglyceride synthesis, which is required for VLDL production. And as we know from the previous videos, LDL is derived from VLDL. So reduced VLDL production, leads to reduced LDL plasma concentrations. Niacin also increases HDL plasma concentration. Niacin lowers plasma levels of both cholesterol and triglycerides, so it is useful in the treatment of familial hyperlipidemias. It is often used in combination with other agents, to treat other severe hypercholesterolemias. The most common side effect of niacin, is niacin flush, which is an intense cutaneous flush, accompanied by an uncomfortable feeling of warmth, and itching. Since this effect is prostaglandin mediated, administration of aspirin prior to taking niacin decreases the flush. Niacin inhibits tubular secretion of uric acid, so it may lead to hyperuricemia and gout. Impaired glucose tolerance and hepatotoxicity have also been reported, so niacin should be avoided in hepatic impairment. That's all for this video. In the next lecture we'll continue discussing the anti-hyperlipidemic drugs.